Hello chess lovers, so I'm here and in this video I would like to share with you a fantastic game played by Estonian chess master Hermann Clemens. His opponent is Friedrich Eisenschmidt and this game was played in 1862 in Tartu. Now let's see how the game progressed. Clemens started the game with e4 and e5 by Eisenschmidt, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, we see the Italian game, bishop c5, and here we go, white is choosing this hyper-aggressive Evans gambit. Here is what Savielli Tartakover wrote about this opening. This brilliant attacking opening was invented to make men understand that chess is a gift from God. Truly nice words. And also would like to mention that this was one of the most popular openings in the 19th century, if not the most popular. In return for the sacrificed pawn, white obtains a fierce attack in many variations, which after a century and a half or more has still not been refuted. Bishop takes b4 by Eisenschmidt, c3 and bishop c5. Not the best square for the dark squared bishop, usually black is either moving back his bishop on a5 or on e7, but in this game we have bishop c5, which allows white to establish his center with a tempo by playing d4, e takes d4, c takes d4, bishop b6, white castles kingside, d6, knight c3, bishop d7, and e5. White has nearly completed his development and is trying to launch an attack on black king. d takes e5, rook e1, knight e7 and knight g5. Not the best attacking move. Instead of knight g5, it was better to capture on e5, which could have created more problems for black. If knight takes e5, then rook takes e5, and if black castles king side, then white is this bishop g5. Here rook e8 can be met with this devastating bishop sacrifice on f7, after which white can announce a check from b3 and then can play knight d5 and black is in trouble, or after bishop g5 if move like bishop e6, then d5 is coming and again black is in trouble. But in our game after knight e7 we have knight g5 and bishop e6. This is a move after which white is managing to gain advantage. It was better to castle king side and this queen h5 move is not dangerous because black can play bishop f5. If bishop takes f7 check then simply king h8. But in our game after knight g5 we see bishop e6 and here Clemens simply captured on e6. f takes e6 and knight takes e6. Queen d6 and white knight munched another pawn. Knight takes g7 check. King f8, queen g4. Instead of queen g4 it was better to centralize this knight with a tempo. If queen g6 then knight h5 and white has a huge advantage but in our game we have queen g4. Bishop takes d4. Instead of bishop takes d4 it was better to capture on d4 with the knight and cover this essential square but in our game we have bishop takes d4. And as black didn't bother himself to cover this e6 square, in here it was very important to announce a check from e6 and then play knight e4. If queen d5 then knight takes c7 it's over white is winning. But in our game after bishop takes d4 we have knight e4. Queen b4, this is a move after which white's attack is becoming decisive. Instead of queen b4, queen g6 could have given black great chances of saving the game. After the exchange of queens, if knight e6 check, then king g8 and no problem at all. But in our game after knight e4 we have queen b4. In here white first announced a check from e6 and after king e8 this time the second knight joined the attack. Knight f6 check, king f7, knight g5 check and king f8. Instead of king f8, if we like king takes f6, then this time queen e6 check is coming and again there is no way to save the game. But in our game after knight g5 check we see king f8 and the question arises how is white going to proceed with the attack? Right now there is a mating threat. That's why in this position Hermann Clemens played a powerful bishop a3 move. 
He's sacrificing the bishop in order to connect his rooks, prevent any mating ideas and then penetrate black's camp. Queen takes a3, after which white queen jumped on e6 with a direct mating threat. Black played knight d8 in hope of covering the f7 square, but this allowed white to mate in 2. You can pause the video and try to find white's next moves. Ready? In this position, Hermann Clemens played queen f7 check. He sacrificed his queen and after knight takes f7, announced an unbelievable checkmate. Look at this brutal checkmate on the board. In my previous video, I have shared with you a chess puzzle composed by Russian chess composer Alexei Troitsky, where white managed to mate in a similar way. But of course, this checkmate is more impressive because it has happened in a real game. By the way, this mating idea is very old and there is a 700 year old chess problem where white is mating in two moves. I guess just by throwing a quick glance you have already found the solution. Thanks for watching, I hope that you enjoyed this brilliant final combination. For more games consider subscribing to my channel. I will see you in the next video. Good luck.